into cybersecurity? There's a ton of content out there, and if you don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. All right, everybody, welcome to the stream. Good at morning. It is Monday, November 6, 2023, episode number 488 of Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. I am your host, Dr. Gerald Dozier. And over the next 45 minutes, me, you, Frank, Laura Flores, um, Chris K. Hall. Hold on. Oh, my God. All these people. Dream Logic. Love it. Love it. Eric Taylor, uh, BSEC, the mods, everyone coming in hot. We got Space Tacos throwing the yeet. Eben, Sharice Lamb, Joseph Bell, Stephanie Strauss coming at you hot from LinkedIn. Marcus Kyler, my man, gets a second yeet. <laughs> Ready to hunt. Can you turn that down just a little bit? Cameron Ranzini, very cool. JD, good to see you. Cindy Lee, holla, holla, holla. We all, including James McQuiggan, coming to you not from 35,000 feet. We'll be writing up the top cybersecurity news stories of the day, and I'll be giving my expert opinion and analysis on each of those stories on what it means to you as a practitioner. So how can you operationalize it this week at work? Or maybe Q1, you're looking to do your uh, you know, fiscal planning, looking for budgets, knowing what the heck's going on in industry is super, super valuable. Also, if you're looking to break into the industry, I got good news for you. You're going to get asked in any job interview, how do you stay current on industry? The Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Third Briefing is your answer. Believe that. Plus, uh, the networking is amazing. Look at all these people over here. Hold on, I'm not mirrored. Look at all these people over here. Networking, mm, chef's kiss, which, by the way, fun fact, was recently added to Webster's Dictionary, if you did not know that. But before we dig into the show, I'd love to say shout out and love to the stream sponsors. But before we do that, I would like to introduce uh, a, little, a little wrinkle to what we're doing here in the stream today. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the Behold Chair. We got our man, James McQuiggan, coming into you live from eight feet uh, above sea level. Uh, James will be joining me in the studio today. James, good morning. Morning, Jerry. Glad to be here. Yeah, we, we'll be sharing a mic. We, you know, we're, we're at 85, 90% production level. Uh, we got the Simply Cyber neon sign coming up later. But stay tuned for that. Super excited. We got a great show for you today. But before we get into it, let me say what's up. Shout out and thanks to uh, the stream sponsors, Barricade Cyber Solutions. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Believe that cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, hardworking business owners into turmoil. But Barricade Cyber Solutions, my friend Eric Taylor and his entire team, they know how to mitigate the damage done by cyber incidents. Believe that. Bookmark it, barricadecyber.com. Links in the description below. Also want to say much love to my good friend, Brandon Poole over at Panopsi Security. Listen, guys, like I said in the beginning, if you're looking to look at Q1, uh, Q2 2024, get your budgets in order, have a plan of attack on what you're going to be doing, um, and you're really not sure, it's okay. Guys, there's a million things to learn in our industry. It's okay if you don't know. But getting help, asking for help, that's that's a good idea, okay? So what you can do is contact Panopsi Security, get hooked up with the ability to do quantified risk assessment, and inform your business based on... Um, you know, basically threat modeling, uh, resources, like how much money, how many people do you have? What's your business's risk appetite and actually put together a actionable plan that will take you from where you are today to where you need to be from a cybersecurity maturity level. And what we're, what we're talking about is the impact of that is not having security breaches. So Panopsi Security, Panopsi.com, consider giving them a call. I love myself some Panopsi, obviously. Um, 
obviously, uh, I'm on the board of advisors there, so uh, I definitely love them. Also, shout out to Anti Siphon, but more about them at the mid roll. It is Monday, which means it's Callan's Art of the Week. We got a double feature for you, double shot of Pokemons. See a super chat coming in across the wire here, Rage and Greg. Let me hold on. Oh my God, bro! Like if it doesn't work instantly for me, I instantly get super mad. Raging Greg, hey, simply cyber. I got a cybersecurity analyst interview today. If you have any advice, good ending questions asked, and leave a good impression, that would be great from both of you. Well, first of all, first of all, did we just become best friends? Yep. Yes, we did just become best friends, Raging Greg. Uh, happy to answer that. Um, we could do it. There is jaw jacking, Greg, so I don't know if you're going to be able to stay through to jaw jacking. But since you did do the super chat, thank you. Let me give you a quick thing. Ask, what is what is the career growth opportunities for that particular role? That shows interest and commitment into wanting to be there long term, which leaves a good taste in their mouth. Plus, it gives you the answer. If they have no friggin' clue, if they're like, oh, no, this is a help desk job and will always be help desk job, you can infer that like this doesn't have an opportunity to grow. Now, you can still take advantage of a lot of resources and capabilities at that organization. But though, to me, that's my go-to question. James, what's your go-to question? Oh, now he's put me on the spot. Go-to question? Uh, yeah, you know, you, you hit it on the head with looking at, you know, what's your career growth path? What opportunities are there? Um, you know, for me, a lot of the time is... Uh, understanding you know more about the organization ask about you know what have been the successes and what have been the failures of the organization and what have they learned from those failures uh it's always good to see that they're transparent and learning uh themselves as well so yeah that's my two bits love it love it love it okay so check it out um y'all um if you are live in chat, each episode of the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Brief is worth half a CP. So say what's up in chat. Again, special edition episode. We're doing the live video production studio. We got James in the B-hole uh, chair trying things out. I think uh, I'll post a, a link or mods if you want to copy paste into chat or whatever uh, into Discord that video I sent you earlier. We've got quite the crazy production going on right here, and I absolutely love it. Yes, Catch EPT. Shall we play a game? We are working multiple cameras, and this is just the beginning. I've got big ideas for the studio. Um, so hashtag team live in chat. Grab, grab a screen cap, uh, put it uh, screen cap, and put it into a folder and save it off forever. Uh, also, if you are watching on replay, let us know what you think about the live video production studio, the B-hole chair. Uh, we got a lot of great feedback um, from Wild West Hack and Fest of doing an A-hole, B-hole um and uh you know so that's what's up also if this is your first episode episode 488 don't worry that you missed 487 of them you're here now it's episode one for you we absolutely love it and welcome you we've got sound effects and emotes for you so if today is your first episode holler at us also i don't know what happened but congratulations robert cooper oh security plus boom baby where is it Nice, Robert Cooper. Way to crush it. Keep crushing it, my man. All right, guys. Uh, I got great news for you, at least in my, my opinion. We're about to get into the news. So do me a favor. You got about 25 seconds left to grab a cup of coffee. You got your coffee cup? Hold on, James. Uh, James, come into frame and, and get the coffee cup. There we go. Good enough. All right. Do me a favor, everybody. Sit back. Relax. Let's let the cool sounds of the hot news Percy! wash over us in an awesome wave. I will... James and I will see you at the mid-roll. From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. These are the Cybersecurity Headlines for Monday, November 6, 2023. I'm Steve Prentice. Okta explains hack source and response timeline. Okta security head David Bradbury called the hack an internal lap stating, quote, employee had signed into their personal Google profile on the Chrome browser of their Okta managed laptop. The username and password of the service account had been saved into the employee's personal Google account, end quote. Additionally, in a blog post released Friday, Okta attributed the two-week time gap between the notifications from 1Password and Cloudflare and the discovery and disabling of the compromised account to the fact that it was not able to, quote, identify suspicious downloads, end quote, in logs. According to the record, quote, Okta said its initial investigation focused on access to support cases, where it examined logs linked to those cases. But the company later realized that the hacker was navigating its system in a different way that was generating an entirely different log event with a different record ID, end quote. 
A link to Okta's blog is available in the show notes to this episode. All right. <laughs> Hate to throw him under the bus right away, but uh, all right. So check it out really quickly, guys. Um, so the, the Okta attack has been going on for a couple weeks. Uh, basically, I thought this was around uh, using session tokens. So uh, basically, Okta's had a bad couple weeks because Okta had the situation where the session tokens would allow you to like log into Facebook, and then you could turn around and log into other managed service providers that were using Okta for their uh, auth- feder- I think I just spit on myself for their federated authentication. Okay, so push that aside. This one is actually uh, really interesting. Okay, so. A company managed laptop, which means you know they could do everything, tighten it down, harden it down, everything. An uh, employee had saved service account credentials into their own personal Google account. Now, super convenient, obviously, uh, but there's two things here. One, I don't. They didn't say. They said Google account. So to me, I don't know if that means Google Chrome browser account or if that means I, I don't know if Google. As far as I know, Google doesn't have a password vault, right? So saving passwords in the browser is an absolute no-no like like that's like a hand slap offense this this individual may get fired frankly because this is like you work for an authentication company and you're saving credentials like you you know that they definitely have policies around not doing this and around not using it now i would argue that this particular individual it was just a lapse in security it was not malicious intent it was not anything like that but if you learn from um, like the LastPass hack and the SolarWinds hack, which, and again, I know LastPass, it was a Plex server, but but individuals with high s- sensitive user account access, again, SolarWinds and LastPass, major, major incidents, both of them, an individual got compromised on their like home network through into the corporate network. Uh, this is a real bad look. Again, I haven't checked Okta's um, stock and stuff to see how bad this is from a reputational harm. The good thing is Okta's like really one of the biggest, if not the biggest player in kind of um, managed service of identity and access. So they they have multi-year contracts. They're deeply entrenched, vendor locked in. So like if you've migrated your environment to leverage Okta, it's not as simple as like changing gas stations that you fill up at. It's much more painful than that. Um, and the final thing I'll say about this, I just recently found out about this service from a friend who's uh, building his own information security program in the great state of California, that Okta has a capability where they will, ma- and get ready for this one, BSEC, they will uh, um, manage your entire Active Directory. Like you can base make your Active Directory um, like a, not a, a servant, but like a, like a, um, a, a node of an Okta controller and Okta will manage all your AD and, 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 and uh, GPOs and stuff like that, which to me, yeah, we could have a whole live stream about like whether or not that's a good idea. And I, I heard arguments on both sides of it, but uh, not a good look for Okta. I'm glad that they were able to do a root cause analysis and get all the way down to this one individual account. That means great logging, great instant response, great security program. Like this gives me high confidence that Okta knows what <laughs> what's going on. Uh, but James, yeah, this just uh, further exemplifies the issue that the humans are the number one target. Uh, cyber criminals are constantly going after people, and and you can have your security awareness programs, and I'm all for it, you know, and where I work. Uh, but your the humans are are going to be your number one target, and you need your due diligence, and you need your programs in place. Uh, but you're, it's better than having you know one person that saved their information in a browser than having twenty or thirty people in your organization without having that type of security awareness program. It, this is bad. Don't get me wrong. This is bad with what's happened. The fact that they had saved their credentials either in their Gmail or in their uh, browser, which you and I both know, and we've said already many times, is is not you know not a good thing to do. Uh, use a password manager, make sure you're, uh, you know, keeping track of all your, your passwords in there. But the other thing for me here also is, you know, here the idea of you've got people with their machines where their work machines and they're logging in and checking their personal email. You know, I would imagine that we all have our phones with us nowadays and we can all check email unless there was something we were doing, but saving your password in there or saving credentials in there 
uh, especially work credentials is a big no-no. Uh, you're just opening up the organization to undue risk overall and uh, just becomes real problematic, And as we've seen here. Because Okta is going to do it, and any organization is going to do everything they can to secure the organization, protect it. Uh, but all it takes is just somebody to open the front door. Everybody that's got an email address for an organization has a key to the front door. And this exemplifies that and proves that uh, more ways than one. So it's important that, yeah, you get your folks educated and trained and aware and understand the risks. Uh, but something like this where logging into their personal Gmail, you know, uh, having a little uh, security coach almost is what you need to be able to, you know, when they try to do that, they get notified, hey, by the way, don't save your passwords or don't save your credentials uh, here in the browser or don't be accessing your work email, your personal email and your work machine. So um, this is this is bad. This is unfortunate. But uh, Okta has certainly got the programs and, and processes in place to be able to go through and, and drill down and find all this. Uh, it was interesting that it went two weeks with the uh, without being able to dig up the uh, to find it because of the password issue, but uh, there must be more uh, in there uh, overall. So, well, we got the mic, so we got a couple of shout outs. Yeah, a couple. Fila, I was going to. Fila Dada passed ISCT CCC exam. Fila? Oh, fantastic. Way to go. Congrats on that ISCT CC. Woo. Welcome to the ISC2 family. Yeah, and we got a first timer, RR. RR, first timer? Oh, hang on. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome we don't it's manual sound effects on that oh one. we don't have that one. Oh, well then good I, I like that one that one's my favorite one all right let's keep rolling let's keep rolling all right looney tunables now being exploited following up on a story we brought you one month ago researchers at cloud security firm aqua have now discovered actors exploiting the linux flaw dubbed looney tunables this is a privilege escalation flaw tagged as cve 2023-4911 with a cvss score of 7.8 in their advisory, Aqua stated they intercepted experimental incursions into cloud environments by a group named Kinsing, K-I-N-S-I-N-G, which they describe as, quote, a significant threat to cloud-native environments, particularly Kubernetes clusters, Docker API, Redis servers, Jenkins servers, and others, end quote. A link to Aqua's blog is also available in the show notes to this episode. Lat all right, so uh, you don't see it very often, uh, but you know, basically Linux, uh, Linux, comp um, not Linux compromise, but exploitation of Linux. Oh, man, that just popped in my ear. Nice uh, exploitation of Linux. Um, you know, we heard about this Looney Tunables a little while ago. Glib um, C, you know, or Lib C is is kind of a popular. Um, whoa, I don't know why it keeps doing that, but oh, I see, I see. Okay, so Lib C. Um, it has notoriously been hacked in the past and, and used for compromises. I don't know where my, uh, my, my HVAC system is. While you're doing that, I'll, I'll figure that out. But if you are running uh, Linux in the uh, cloud and it's internet facing, you may want to investigate whether or not this is particularly exploitable. Again, this is um, a 7.8 CVSS score, so it's not really bad. It's a buffer overflow. It probably gets you access to something, but not much. And then you'd have to chain the exploits uh, together. That's one thing that people should understand, especially if you're like new to the industry. Just because you can like exploit something doesn't mean that you get you know access or you you've compromised everything or you own the box. This isn't a Hollywood movie. A lot of times you have to chain exploits together in order to pivot through and get to the access you need ultimately to compromise what you want. Um, this kin scene, by the way, uh, I thought that's like kissing threat actors, and I was like, oh, we're getting getting a little romantic up in here. But um, you know, basically, cloud native attacks. They had mentioned Kubernetes. Uh, right now, Docker Kubernetes is very hot. It's so hot right now. I definitely need um, that meme. Um, I wish I wish I had saved it. There's a meme of the week last week was me uh, as Will Ferrell saying it's so hot. But Kubernetes is so hot right now. That's an area of interest, by the way. If you're interested in developing skills that would be marketable and have high value right now, uh, understanding, thank you, having Docker and um, Kubernetes experience in some way uh, partnered with cloud it's so hot right now. All right, uh, Lo Looney Tunables, James. What do we got? What do you? Any any thoughts on this particular issue? Yeah, I mean, here we are talking with Linux, and of course, everyone's you know, oh my gosh, Max and Linux don't get viruses. No, but we do. We continue to see uh, vulnerabilities being exposed and and discovered. And so, you know, going after PHP, 
isn't surprising because it's always one of the ones that's always gets uh, attacked and targeted. And of course, you know, always going after the money, you know, cryptocurrency is always the, uh, the cyber. Why do bank robbers rob banks? Cause that's where the money is. And cyber I'm a criminals crypto evangelist. There you I go. Love it. Love it. Love it. There we go. I said the keyword, uh, but here we are. They're going after the, uh, they're going after cryptocurrency and we've been seeing this for years, you know, going after the exchanges, going after, uh, systems and then being able to try to mine it themselves as well. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, while it is a seven, four, you know, it's, it's not a nine, but it's still something that needs to be addressed and make sure we get uh, patched and taken care of. Also uh, final thought on that buffer overflows exist in 2023. I know some people poo poo it as like an academic exercise. It's it's, they still exist. They still happen. Yeah. So, you know, don't, don't sleep on those. This group uses well, that was, candy corn. That was an accidental spicy. That was a misfired spicy. <laughs> against blockchain engineers. According to Elastic Security Labs, candy corn, spelt with a K in both cases, K-A-N-D-Y-K-O-R-N, is a Mac OS malware specifically, quote, an advanced implant with a variety of capabilities to monitor, interact with, and avoid detection. It utilizes reflective loading a direct memory form of execution that may bypass detections, end quote. The threat actors used social engineering techniques through Discord in an attempt to trick people into downloading a malicious ZIP platform. North Korea-linked threat actors are well known for targeting cryptocurrency industry organizations to circumvent international sanctions and finance its military operations. Discord... Okay, so, all right, a couple things here. One, Lazarus Group. If you don't know Lazarus Group, um, you, you absolutely should know Lazarus Group. This is like a, everybody knows Lazarus Group, Threat Actor Group. They're North Korea. They are highly sophisticated. They're highly effective. They're, typic they're basically bank robbers. Um, in the last, like, six months, North Korea has been weaponizing them a little bit more to steal uh, missile technology from Russia. But just push that aside. That's not really a, their main MO. They are they're bank robbers okay and for what it's worth lazarus group has the highest um i think three of the top five highest uh you know digital crypt, uh, crypto heists in history um they also tried to rob a billion dollars from the bangladesh uh bank of bangladesh uh in 2015 so no no small potatoes now they are attacking individuals so normally this by the way this is just indicative of like to me, the blend of crypto winter with like the, the cool down of crypto being a hot thing and um, how desperate, frankly, Lazarus Group is because they used to attack platforms, right? Like they, they, they compromised Axie Infinity Ronin Bridge for $600 million. They compromised another, um, uh, I can't remember what platform it was, but it was another one of these like platforms where you could change currency around and stuff like that to the tune of like $300 million. Now they're attacking individual engineers and get in compromising their boxes. Now they may be wanting to um, ultimately use that blockchain engineers access to get into a platform. But based on the stories that we're reading right here, it's more like they're attacking and, and kind of leveraging. Um, oh, actually, I guess they're, yeah, it seems like they're attacking the individual engineers right now. Now, <clears throat> you might be like, why on earth, as an engineer, would I download a freaking Pi, like a Python file, install it, and then run all sorts of sideload things and, and run Discord? Guess what? People, crypto bros, I know there's crypto ladies too, but crypto bros, everybody thinks that they've got an angle and that like they're, they're, you know, they're going to be the next like uber rich. They're catching the wave early, bro. Going to buy low, sell high. Come at me, son. I got, I got, um, you know, fast cars for days. And in reality, this level of not greed, but like, like people get so emotional and so whipped up into it that they push aside logic and reason in order to like get in early. And, and that's what they're taking advantage of here. So way to go. Like, frankly, Lazarus group, this is a much more nuanced attack. Normally they just send loaded uh, malicious emails with attachments and hope that Carl clicks on it. Um, I, I do appreciate whoever the um, uh, the researchers were that they went with this kind of sugar Halloween thing with the sugar loader and the candy corn. You can't help it. If, if you work at a big tech company and they do blockchain engineering, just, I guess, I I advise your staff about this. And if you are an individual uh, who dabbles in crypto and stuff like that, do, like, don't fall for freaking DMs on Discord. Like, that's like number one. 
Number one, right? Ooh, I got uh, early drop. Get get the mint before whatever. Like, no. Nobody, nobody. Hold on. Let me, can I go full screen? Like, hold on. I got to, I'm like, I'm going to lose my mind right now. Hold on. We got we got a lot going on here. And I, I definitely want to say this. Can I do big Jerry cam? What is this? Look, look, look hold on. I, I even want to, look, look, look. Nobody's going to call you randomly out of the blue to give you an inside line on millions of dollars. That's not happening ever, 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 ever. Please do not do that, James. How do I follow Spicy! that? It <laughs> Spicy. Just me. So it gets Jerry all riled up. Come on, stop. Cut that out. No, it's interesting because when you think of the nation state, when you think of APT, which camera are we on? We're on that one over there. Oh, now I lost it. Um, when we think about. Uh, the nation state and how APT and how they operate. Uh, essentially, they're a business. They have multiple levels of tech support. And this particular type of tech could be something where they are, this is one particular group of, uh, one particular group of folks that are um, doing the attacks, you know, and so your level one techs are, are able to get this one out, you know, and they came up with the cute names and they got the different payloads. And once they gain access, then they're passing it on over to the next group. And then they're taking the attacks and going that much further. So within APT, uh, within this APT, within uh, Lazarus group, because they've been going on for, you know, 2014, this is a big Sony hack. So you got to imagine they're 10 years in, probably just had their 10 year anniversary party. And they've got all different levels of experts and all different level of, of techs. You think about your own organizations or even help desk we were talking before. You got your level one tech, your level two tech, your level three techs. And, you know, they'll do one thing and then move on to the next one. Uh, and so with this one, this could be just one of their particular programs coming in. And uh, the, uh, and it, yeah, <laughs> got to love the tech stuff. Uh, and so essentially you've got, all these different groups and this could be just one particular level of the attacks going through and and uh uh working their working their way through with the, the c2 and of course with the discord yeah it, it, discord slack you know and discord has really become uh so much bigger in the last couple of years as a way to be able to social engineer people and when you're getting on there and you got people dropping in messages and you think oh it's a great new toy or a tool and you know you're using it but you know and then you get somebody that sends you a link and you think you can trust them because hey they're on discord and we're all the same kind of people on discord but no it's just another platform for the for them to be able to launch attacks so the same methodology applies when you've got something on the internet just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true just because you get something in your email doesn't mean it's true just because you get a link on discord doesn't mean it's it's active overall so back to you yeah, uh, the speaker wires in our in our mic wires are getting all tangled, and this, this is a, a problem. We're going to have to work through this, James. All right, let's keep going. Switch to temporary file links to block malware delivery. Speaking of Discord, in a move designed to stop threat actors from hosting and pushing malware through its CDN, Discord plans to switch to temporary file links by year's end. The company stated, quote, there is no impact for Discord users that share content within the Discord client. Any links within the client will be auto-refreshed. If users are using Discord to host files, we would recommend they find a more suitable service, end quote. All of this means that as of next year, all links to files uploaded to Discord servers will expire after That's 24 awesome. hours. This is massive. This is massive. Hold on one second. Oh, I think a super chat just came in or something. Oh, Samar Hyatt just subbed. All right, hold on. We got uh, we got all sorts of love here, guys. I definitely appreciate. Um, I do have a multi-input XLR uh, mixing board over here. It's in a box. I just please grant me grace. I'm I'm trying to get into this thing, guys. Listen, Discord. Everybody's using it. It's gone from a cool little uh, like ooh, we want to do gaming and talk to each other to enterprise grade. Like simply cyber uses it, so you know it's you know it's legit, right? Legit. Okay, and I know everybody wants to go ham on um, Slack, but like I'm a Discord guy. Okay, that, that's what's up. You're a Mac guy. I'm a PC guy. You're a Slack guy. I'm a Discord guy. Come at me, bro. What what is this right here? Oh my god. Um. Okay. Okay. Uh, mods are giving me a hard time. Here's the TLDR. We are running behind schedule right now. Discord is taking a proactive move when the vendor implements security by default by oh, deleting. Links to files. This is how, guys, in the last story, this is how Lazarus Group is doing it. They post stupid files 
on, you know, to, to malware and tell you it's going to like change your life in a good way and people download it. It's, it's such an attack vector that Discord has done something about it. Congratulations to Discord. If I had like a sound effect, um, yeah, like, like, okay. <laughs> okay, this is like, catch me outside. How about that? That's what Discord's saying to people hosting malware in their environment. Way to go, Discord. Uh, this is going to go a long way. But to me, hey, listen up really quickly. This is a reality. Threat actors are going to pivot and find some other way to deliver malware. This is just a, it's like when there's water running down and you stick like a rock in the water, the water's just going to go around it, right? It's the same thing here. It's not going to stop malware delivery. It's just going to help protect people from getting screwed on Discord, which I love. Um, quick thoughts? Yeah, quick thoughts on, yeah, certainly kudos. And I know a lot of folks like to use Discord for file. <laughs> Uh, for saving files and keeping them out there. And uh, now it will just have to be links. Uh, and even then uh, they're going to be switching to a temporary file link. So essentially your links are only going to be there for 24 hours. So it'll be, you may want to have, start using GitHub to keep your files out there and just send folks out there. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Uh, this will probably be sometime early next year when this goes into effect. Holy crap. Did we hit a record? We do. We have 403 people. Oh my God. Like I came in like a Way to go, everybody. That's sick. That's sick. That's so sick, dude. And like a-hole, b-hole, like everything's new. Ah, way to go. Like way to go. Hey, Simply Cyber community, congratulations. We've got a huge week lined up with Simply CyberCon, all the trainings. We'll talk about it at jawjacking. But thank you. Thank you so much. And yes, I'm, I'm picking up that um, people like James McQuiggan, and that's why they're here in, in record numbers. Uh, I just in in full disclosure before we do the mid roll in full disclosure somebody reached out to James after Deadwood when he hosted and said that he should run his own show and just cut me out um, at seven thirty yeah yeah like or seven fifty five really just kind of like uh, snake in and everything so uh, I'm glad he enjoys the James McQuiggan show um, you know Whoa. with with uh, featuring Jerry or you know like. <laughs> You know how, like, in uh, the, the 80s shows, it would have, like, all the main characters, and then it's, like, also special guest, special guest Jerry or whatever? Yeah. So, yeah. I'll, I'll just get behind the glass and start producing only. All right, let's do the mid-roll, y'all. And now, a word from our sponsor. Offsec, formerly Offensive Security, the cyber training company behind the well-known OSCP certification and Kali Linux distro, is hosting a virtual summit for CISOs and cybersecurity leaders called Evolve on November 15th. During the event, you will learn how to attract and assess top talent, how to craft positioning for budget conversations, why CISOs make great board members, and more. Hear from forward-thinking InfoSec leaders from companies like <laughs> Cisco, Amazon, and Salesforce. Save your seat and equip yourself with actionable takeaways to help shape the future of your organization's security. You can register now at offsec.com slash evolve. That's O-F-F-S-E-C dot com slash evolve. All right, so we're back with the Simply James show. The Daily Cyber Threat Brief with Simply James. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love it. I don't know if that was a mod chat thing only, or you guys are saying it's called Simply James now, but we'll have to get all the, the we'll have to rebrand all the marketing material, get the new coffee mugs listed. All right, guys. Hey, I want to say thank you to all of you. Let me, let me switch this appropriately to what we need to look at. Guys, hey, thank you all of you for A, being here, showing up every day with the consistency. B, setting a new record. Dude, 400, we straight shattered it. Um, and super pumped, you know, I, I love the community. I put in the, I put the work in, I show up every single day, 488 days in a row, um, because I care and because I think we're making positive impacts on people. Um, thanks to the stream sponsors, Barricade Cyber Panopsi Security and Anti-Siphon Training. Listen, y'all, Anti-Siphon Training is disrupting the traditional training industry by making high quality cutting edge education available to everyone, regardless of their financial position. Believe that. You don't need to let money be a blocker anymore for you. Go to the link in the description below. Go to training. Go to pay what you can training. And uh, look at their calendar. This button right here. Boom. You can see what's coming up, right? You want to get CISSP training. You want to get API training. Linp's training. Like Wireshark, whatever. Dude, 
Just take advantage of this. This is what Anti-Siphon's doing. This is from Black Hills Information Security. If you know for a second about Black Hills Information Security, their kind of subtitled tagline is sucking at capitalism. They are inspiring so many people, including me, to like try to make a positive impact and make the cybersecurity community as wonderful and as rich and as beautiful, if I can, as it can be. We love the Simply Site. Oh, wait, I, by the way, hold on. I'm all over the place. If you are getting value from the stream, do me a favor, you 400 beautiful people. Go and hit the like button right now. Looks like um, six of you left. That's okay. Uh, hit the like button right now. It helps others find it. It's how we grow the community. It's how we find 400 people in the morning. Team Replay, hit the like button. I'm telling you, it makes a difference. Consistency matters, Okay. Shout out to the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Brittany Burnham uh, loved her post. If you get a chance, go on LinkedIn, search for this hashtag. The most recent one was from Brittany Burnham. Wonderful woman putting in the work, working her butt off, and getting uh, the just rewards she gets for doing that effort. Guys, if you would like to supercharge your, your, um, your LinkedIn feed and build your network with meaningful, like-minded professionals who are supportive and inclusive, go on LinkedIn, search for this hashtag. Whoops. Go on LinkedIn, search for this hashtag, hashtag Simply Cyber Community Challenge, and connect with the people posting and the people in the comments. First of all, it takes you five minutes a day. You will thank me in two weeks. If you really want to go ham, comment on the posts. You'll get picked up in the Peloton. People will start connecting with you. It will scale in an amplified, exponential way. Believe me, you will be so happy in two weeks' time when your LinkedIn feed is awesome, okay? I get to choose someone from the community. So who wants to do the Simply Cyber Community Challenge? Let me know. Actually, James, uh, as the guest B-hole chair, let me know uh, who you want, and we'll let you pick. While people are queuing up for James there, it is the Simply Cyber. Um, Monday is Art of the Week, and my boy Callan is the one who does the art. Let's switch to the big cam, and I'll switch to this camera right here. Callan built his own uh, Pokemon. Uh, now, this one's a little dark. It is Pokemon. This one is incredibly powerful if you're a Pokemon. He actually named it Death, which I thought was a little dark. Uh, but his special move is Boxer Tape. He has 3,000 uh, hits. So, like, if he hits you, it's for 3,000, which basically decimates everyone. So, if you're looking for an OP Pokemon card that's probably illegal and on the black market, you can pick it up at your local dark web retailer. Uh, thank you so much, Callan, for your art of the week. James, you want to throw uh, throw it to the Simply Cyber Community Challenge? I I would like to uh, have uh, Fella, our new ISC two CC cert holder, see if they're interested in and in, uh, uh, completing the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. I know I did it a few months ago, and it took me too long to write out my story, so I made a video. So you can definitely check that out. That's out on LinkedIn as well. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I would say let's see if fella can do it that wants to if for uh, tell us your story because you know everybody's story is is unique it's different we, we all didn't come into this industry the same way so uh this is a great way and i i love going through and checking out the stories and seeing how people get into this industry as well all right so fella let us know in chat if you can mods please connect uh with fella and uh let's get it going otherwise we'll have to pick somebody else uh, <laughs> people are giving uh, Callan a bunch of love for his his thing. All right, it's eight forty four. We're gonna have to uh, speed round this. Mortgage company Mr. Cooper suffers a cyber attack. Dallas-based Mr. Cooper, formerly Nation Star Mortgage Holdings Inc. and one of the largest mortgage providers in the U.S., has temporarily shut down some of its systems, including those that process customer payments. It has already warned customers of the incident and assures them that they will not incur fees, penalties, or negative credit reporting as they work to resolve the issue. According to Security Week, quote, taking systems offline is the typical response to a ransomware attack, end quote. Ontario Hospital. Okay, so yeah, here's the TLDR. Um, first of all, uh, this company got hit with ransomware. They're doing the right thing, by the way, by not screwing their customers over who can't make payments, uh, by not hitting them with late fees, by getting what's going on. This is this is a mortgage company, but for all intents and purposes, I would argue this is like a financial services company. Uh, financial services, in my history uh, and experience, they they fund the crap out of InfoSec because um, they it's <laughs> straight cash, homie. You do not want to screw around when it comes to producing money, especially if you're ultra wealthy, right? You want to hold on to that. Um, just as a quick aside, if I was named, if if my company was named like Nationwide Mortgage K 
ca- company. I don't know. I would go with the rebranding to Mr. Cooper. That definitely seems like taking a step down and being like less uh, savvy, but what, whatever. Good on them. I'm sure they're making bank. So uh, ransomware incident. It looks like they're doing the right thing with incident response. And, you know, it is what it is. Not much here. Okay. Hospitals do battle with Daishin. Five hospitals in southwestern Ontario have been dealing for two weeks with a cyber attack in which millions of hospital and patient records were stolen. Some of these files have now been released, while at the same time, patients have had to find other hospitals to go to for cancer treatments and other procedures. The perpetrators of the attack appear to be a little-known group called Daixin, D-A-I-X-I-N. The CEO of Windsor Regional Hospital, David Musage, said on Thursday that the impacted hospitals closely examined the ransom demand from the cybercriminals and decided against paying it. Quote, we knew that we could not trust the promise of a criminal to delete this information, he said, adding, quote, we learned that payment would not speed up the safe restoration of our network, end quote. Yeah, so basically here you've got this hospital in southern Ontario, Canada, my home, where I grew up many, many years ago. Uh, But, you know, in like uh, a lot of other countries outside the U.S., it is socialized medicine. And, you know, you've got people that are waiting weeks and weeks and weeks to be able to go in. And when the hospitals aren't able to take care of the patients, this becomes a really big problem for them overall. Kudos to the uh, the security team that's at the hospital with regards to the fact that they weren't going to pay because it seems like they've got their backups and they're using their backups. And depending on how quick it takes for them to restore, trying to decrypt once you pay and get the decryption key, that takes even longer. So backups are certainly a key item here overall. Um, this particular group, Jackson, they uh, like to do their attacks via VPN connections. You know, they'll go after VPN solutions that, you know, looking for exploits in there, but also credential stuffing. Uh, I've run across these guys a couple of times over the years. And so they're a relatively new group, but uh, they like to utilize exploits that are already in VPNs and target that and go after them that way. 2022, they hacked uh, AirAsia. Uh, oh, AirAsia in 2022. Airlines. Yeah. And so, yeah, so they're, they're going after airlines, hospitals, they're, getting in whatever they can, you know, looking for those exposed VPN or un, uh, unpatched systems on VPN solutions and targeting them, credential stuffing and so forth. All right. Let's move it. American Airlines Pilots Union suffers ransomware attack. The union representing more than 15,000 of the airline's pilots oh. stated that the attack was discovered last Monday, October 30th. Some systems were encrypted and some core services have been restored and work continues. No mention has yet been made of any gang claiming responsibility for this incident. Okay. And now, last... <laughs> That's about as thin a story as possible. So uh, what this story just said is, company has ransomware incident, details at seven. I mean, like, like there's, no, <laughs> there's nothing here. Um, it's a Monday. It is a Monday, right? So American Airlines, whatever, uh, with all due respect, the pilot union... You know, it's just an organization. Um, it's kind of irrelevant that it's a, you know, has to do with aviation. This isn't really an aviation story. It's just a workforce uh, ransomware story. This could have happened to anyone. Since no ransomware threat actor group has taken ownership of this, if I had to guess, this is a affiliate model. And, it, you know, they've pushed back to the affiliate marketplace. And whoever the uh, ransomware is a service threat actor that's managing that affiliate program just hasn't had time to, to reach out. Uh, probably Lockbit. We've seen recently Lockbit as a threat actor group is, I don't want to say overwhelmed, but they probably need to hire more managers um, because they have an overwhelming amount of, of affiliates. And, they, you know, they basically have been overwhelmed. Again, as James mentioned earlier, threat actors are basically uh, businesses at this point, and they run their operation like a business. And say what you will, we can all make fun of middle management, but there's a reason that there's there. Like you, when you have 100, 200, 300 uh, affiliates, like think of bug bounty programs, right? Because that's probably the closest parallel. With a bug bounty program, if you have 10,000 bug bounty hunters, you can't have one community manager for the bug bounty hunters. They'd be getting thousands of emails a day and taking time, lots of time, in order to respond and manage that workload. So you need to scale up. But you're basically overhead, your management, right? So, you know, again, these threat actor groups are making millions of dollars. So hiring someone for 200 grand or giving them 1% of all ransom that they they collect is probably the the model they want to do but honestly 
if again, I don't prep for any of these stories, neither does James. So I'm thinking off the hip here, but like, if you're going to invite someone to be middle management at a threat actor group, you better have damn good trust uh, who you're hiring. Because you could be inviting a, a fox into the hen house, whether it's law enforcement, right? Give a little love. Right? Whether it's law enforcement or a, a, just a criminal in general. Criminals aren't really kind to each other normally, so you got to have high trust to bring someone in. So that's going to deter. It's not like they can open a, a freaking zip recruiter ad for middle management of threat actor platform affiliates. Right? You feel me? So, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's let's keep rolling. Uh, James, you got any thoughts on this one? We got 10 minutes here. Yeah, if I were to add anything, you know, when, going on what you were saying with regards to, you know, this is a business, the middle management. This is this could be if we haven't heard from the group already, you know, ransomware is a service. There is that affiliate program out there. They've, you know, had the access and, and then launched the uh, ransomware attack. So it'd be curious to see, you know, who ends up coming forward with this, what kind of data they get, because it is the pilots. Most likely it's going to be PII information, but you know, what other additional information is going to come out of this uh, that they would have stolen overall. I'm sure we're going to hear about, you know, tonight at seven o'clock uh, overall. Yeah. Hey, and it looks like um, a fella did is uh, left, left the stream, left the chat. Let's, let's assume they had a meeting to run to or, or something like that. But uh, first time, or <laughs> maybe they were like, welcome to the party pound. They're like, I'm out of here. Like just pull, pull the uh, eject from between their legs. But want to say shout out to Tarn, Tarn Preak Virk, Tarn Preak Virk. You got the baton. Please, uh, you know, acknowledge the acceptance of the baton. And we look forward to seeing your post on LinkedIn with the hashtag Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Let's keep rolling, y'all. Week in ransomware. In addition to the organizations already reported on in this newscast and following an upwards trend in ransomware activity, last week saw the Toronto Public Library attacked by Black Basta. Also, Ace Hardware and the British Library suffered attacks. These latter two are not confirmed to be ransomware attacks, but they do share many signs usually associated with that type of attack. Of the many reports released last week, Bleeping Computer published analysis on the new Hunters International Ransomware Gang, which is believed to be a rebrand of Hive, a group that had been taken down by the FBI. All Remember, right. we have... All right, here we go. Um, there's no mistaking this one, okay? So, by the way, I love that you can hear the audio now. Like, it's such an upgrade to the to the a-hole, b-hole situation. All right, so every every single Monday, um, or sometimes in Fridays, they'll do a weekend roundup. I, I guess maybe the stories were so good on Friday that they didn't do it. But anyways, um, again, every time there's one of these, I invite you as a practitioner to, or, or if you're looking to break into the industry, find one of these stories, dig in a little bit, get the details to understand what happened, why it happened, find one that resonates. If you're interviewing at a you know municipality, find one of those stories. If you're interviewing at an energy company, find one of those stories, right? You want to make it relevant to whoever you're talking to. Second of all, um, if you work at one of these companies, having great case studies to resonate with the business and the thought leaders and the end users, uh, it's going to hit. Now, the one thing I want to point out, Hive Ransomware got taken down by law enforcement, probably uh, in like a really cool coordinated effect. This was like, I want to say Hive Ransomware went down like maybe six months ago. It feels like it's been a while, uh, but I don't want to call them cockroaches. But basically, when you rip down the infrastructure and arrest a couple people, you do not root out all of the problems. And the money, the money that they make in these ransomware things, models is just too much it's too much money and it, it, it it's so much that people are much, much more willing to take the risk of getting arrested and a lot of them operate with immunity in eastern europe under you know basically a russian um uh bulletproof vest of being taken down so but the the interesting thing is you can do all this ransomware but like you can't buy a cool boat or a cool car or a cool house or go out to a cool dinner with Bitcoin, right? You've got to get it, you've got to get it transferred into basically hard USD or whatever currency you want. But those exchanges have know your customer laws. Some of them are a little bit more loose. Uh, we saw Binance was kind of loose and then they got knocked down. We saw FTX get, you know, basically hosed. So as, as, as successful as all this is, again, you still got to transfer the money out, which is where they start putting the pieces together, the blockchain. If you haven't read Tracers in the Dark by um, 
Andy Greenberg, uh, definitely check that out. It's the the blockchain is immutable, y'all. You, it's evidence, and you cannot once they tie it to a human. These wallets, you can follow the trail of breadcrumbs right to the door of the threat actors. So that's the one thing I would say. Whenever a ransomware threat actor group or dark web marketplace, for that matter, gets taken down, to me, it's just a matter of time until you see it pop up under a different uh, brand. Uh, 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 James, we got five minutes. So uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, with all these different ransomware groups, you look at Conti from a couple of years ago, um, you know, you cut the head off and another one grows in its place. Uh, three more grow in its place. Uh, utilizing Hive, it could have been a couple of the folks or the other lieutenants left over from it uh, that didn't get pinched, so to speak. And essentially, they're kind of starting it back up again for that fear factor because it's, hey, they, they had their name out there and they're going to use them again. Um, and, you know, the fact that we are seeing an, an uptick in ransomware doesn't surprise me overall. Uh, and it's kind of one of the things that I'm expecting for next year is that it's going to get uh, a lot worse with ransomware. You know, we always think that, you know, oh, my gosh, it can't get any more worse. But we're still seeing organization after organization getting hit. Uh, and so we can start detecting uh, malicious activity inside the network faster. Uh, they're going to be able to, they're going to still get away with it and uh, be launching those ransomware attacks. So hopefully we can, uh, for next year, hopefully start getting detection methods improved, maybe start utilizing some AI, you know, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we're seeing uh, month over month metrics indicating, not indicating, I mean, proving that ransomware attacks are continuing to increase. My suspicion is that the Russian Ukrainian conflict, not to say it's it's over, but it's like it's it the, the the snow in the snow globe has settled. So normal daily operations and all that, you can kinda like any job that you go into and you've been there a year because they've been under attack for about a year, like you can manage your, you know, military capabilities, you know, in two hours and instead of like goofing around at the water cooler for another six hours. You do your little ransomware operation over here. So I, I suspect that's part of the uptick. Plus, the Russian economy has been decimated by a lot of the sanctions and stuff that NATO has pushed down So in the United States. So certainly a lot of impact causing people, like I've said this a million times, like I'm not a pro-ransomware person, but when someone gets pushed into the corner and it's like, how are you going to feed your kids? How are you going to keep the, your, your family warm? You know, if you need cash money, man, like sometimes you... You got to do what you got to do sometimes. You know what I mean? All right, guys. Let me uh, get into this really quickly. Oh, hold on. Let me do this. Um, guys, that is going to do it for the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing today. But hold on. We've got Jaw Jacking coming in a minute. It is, um, it is simply CyberCon Week. So follow me up with this one, guys. If you are available at 2 p.m. today, my man Charles Finfrock, famous of... I'm a crypto evangelist. I love it. I love it. I love it. He is running the first activity, the first event of the Simply CyberCon. It is an open workshop for anyone who wants to attend. It will be streamed live on the Simply Cyber channel, uh, YouTube channel, and LinkedIn. I will be producing it, so I'll be behind the glass, which apparently more people like than me in front of the glass. Um, but we'll, you'll be doing OSIN. I believe Charles has an active case like for his job, like his company that we are going to, he's going to pull us in as basically junior analyst and we're going to do real OSINT and really hunt down a real person. I did, I did tell him to be like, be mindful that this is on my YouTube channel and not to get me deplatformed. But, um, you know, he's, he's mindful of that. So if you are looking to get educated, learn OSINT from a boss, um, come check it out. That's at two o'clock today. Uh, obviously we've got great stuff all week. Um, we will, during jaw jacking, I will um, let you guys, uh, we'll, we'll get into more details on that, but go to simplycybercon.org mods if you could drop a link in chat. Simplycybercon.org. Don't miss it out, guys. We got training today, training tomorrow, two tracks of cons on Wednesday, training on Thursday or Friday with Jack Scott. We're still getting that sorted out. Uh, but guys, uh, de genuinely appreciate it. Before we switch over to jaw jacking, in case you're um, waiting, uh, hold on, in case you're waiting, I do want to say thanks to the Behold Chair here, James McQuiggan. I'm Jerry. James? I'm James. Thank you all so very much. If you want to stay for jaw jacking, let's do that right now. But otherwise, be well, and uh, we'll see you in a hot minute.
All right, hold on. Uh, you know what? We're not going to do jaw jacking that way. We're going to do it uh, the way that we were just doing it because I didn't build out the profiles. Uh, I wasn't thinking uh, of that. But guys, let's put some jams on. All right, hold on. Let me. Let's put on some cool beats. All right, we're not getting spicy up in here. But guys, welcome to jaw jacking. Uh, jaw jacking. If you're new here, is just a chill AMA. We got 30 minutes. Uh, James McQuiggan's been working in the industry for just short of a million years, I think, James. Uh, I, I've been in the industry uh, about 20, but if you work in InfoSec, one year is actually equal to seven years. It's like dog years, dog years. for working in the industry. I'm actually 24, so look at me. Like James is 32. This is what you look like when you work in the industry. <laughs> but uh, we're definitely here to take your questions, get into it. Um, I mentioned during the uh, the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing about um, the Simply CyberCon. I'll pull that up. Uh, James, uh, you know, like kick it off and I'll queue up some resources. Sounds good. Yeah, so for folks that are going to be watching Simply CyberCon this week, uh, check out track two as I'm going to be moderating that track. And we're going to have a rock and kicking time over there uh, going up against the uh, track one with uh, Mr. Jerry Osier who's going to be moderating that track track, but I am honored. I'm priv uh, very privileged uh, and excited that we're going to, I get to host uh, or moderate track number two. So definitely come over and check that out. Um, if I had been prepped more, I would have had my list of all the speakers that, that are going to be on track two for, to read off, but you can go check it out on the website uh, and, and see there and, and also pick up some merch because Jerry's got some really cool merch out there for the simply CyberCon. Uh, certainly worth checking out. But no, today has been fantastic to uh, sit here next to you in the B-hole chair there, Jerry, and uh, help help set up and, and work towards having this more of a regular thing. Of course, I'm down in Orlando, and literally as soon as this goes off the air today in about a half an hour, I'm jumping in my car and I'm racing back to Orlando. I've got an event there tonight with my uh, my IAC2. Well, I can't say it's my IAC2. It's the IAC2 Central Florida chapter uh, racing back there for that event there tonight. And... Uh, yeah, and then I'll be uh, joining you on we on Wednesday for uh, Simply Cyber CyberCon. Very excited for that and looking forward to that overall and real excited that everybody's here today. So we got any questions, drop it in the chat. Uh, there's a competition about who's going to get more views. Oh, who's going to get more views? Too. Are we going to have Simply Cyber or, uh, sorry, Simply Jerry versus Simply James? You know, we could bust out the chess set and just kind of go at it over the chessboard, over the... Uh, eight by eight board uh, with uh, kings queens pawns knights bishops and rooks you know that'd be kind of fun but uh any uh let's see what we got going on in the chat okay uh question uh jerry and james ask can ask oh. mods, to drop questions. Yeah. mods drop a chat or question in for us what's the name of the book pertaining to crypto traces in the dark, traces in the dark. Tracers. that tracers in the dark oh that's um Andy Greenberg, yeah, great guy. Got to meet him uh, last week in Nashville, or the week before. Uh, he had the uh, he had his book. Uh, he did a one of the keynotes at the conference, and then uh, had a book signing afterward. It was really cool. Got him to autograph my copy of the book for me. So, you know, while Jerry's looking for a good, and we're waiting for a good question to come up, I just want everybody uh, to kind of ponder and think about this. And in, in you know, we're dealing with cybersecurity attacks and incidents all the time, but. If a, uh, a female cybersecurity incident research person um, is working on a massive incident, an event at their organization, um, and they discover that they become, that they are pregnant, uh, when they have that baby, is that considered a son of a breach? So just something to think about there. Uh, I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. I won't add anything more to it. I so don't have I, you don't have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Can I use your videos to get into the industry with my Sec Plus A Plus? I don't have experience with Sec Plus. Oh, oh, I. He's earned the Sec Plus. Oh, you've earned the Sec Plus. Okay, well, yeah, no, definitely. If you've got the Sec Plus, you know, looking at watching these daily videos, you know, Jerry does a, an amazing job every day, and certainly listening to his insights. The newsletter that comes out from Simply Cyber every week. You had the newsletter drop this week, uh, dropped this morning. I remember seeing it in my inbox. You know. That kind of information you want to kind of put into your, you know, put away in your little filing, your second brain and, and refer to that. So when you're having conversations, you know, whether it's upper management, whether it's colleagues, whether it's friends and family, you know, pass that information along and, and have that 
uh, in there so that you've got that information and an understanding either Jerry's perspective or even have your own. I, I know that you've had folks tell you, Jerry, that they'll watch the show and they'll pause Jerry right after he or right after the story is told we hear it through the the audio but then pauses it before jerry's insights and then kind of think of their own make some notes and then listen to what jerry says and and then from there they kind of see uh, assess where they are as jerry because you know jerry's human you know he hits his perspective he gets frustrated and just like the rest of us but also at the same time it's great to hear his perspective as well as figure out what your own is and then go on from there and then have that conversation with colleagues at work you know you know with these ransomware attacks you know are having backups is important you know having a process is important how often do we check our backups those kind of things and making sure you're having those questions overall how was my keynote how was your keynote are you asking me are you oh Oh, the question was how was jerry's keynote um jerry's keynote was um oh man you're putting me on the spot jerry's keynote let me think about jerry's keynote no (laughs) no jerry's keynote was awesome he did a game of thrones uh parallelism to cybersecurity, which was really cool. He had all the different characters, all the different uh, uh, locations and, and different uh, aspects from Game of Thrones and aligned it to the way things are in cybersecurity. And great information overall. Uh, and also at the same time from that keynote, you know, you got that motivation to be able to make sure that you weren't one of the bad guys. You weren't one of the ones, uh, you know, within cybersecurity. But it was very good overall. Uh, Jerry and I talked about it afterward and, and had a conversation about it. Gave him some tips, some some things to kind of spruce it up a bit. And uh, and I actually did my AI talk that afternoon as well. And uh, that went that seemed to go really well. Uh, I, and I'm excited because I get to give that same talk again this weekend at, at another B sides. But this B sides is over in Copenhagen. I will be in Denmark at the end of the week and delivering that presentation over there. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, world traveler. What can I say? 35,000 feet, seat 3A. I wish I was in seat 3A going over. Uh, but, uh, but no, excited to be heading over there and, and uh, at another conference, uh, ISC uh, Copenhagen next week. Excited to be there for that. But, uh, yeah. Cool. What else we got? So, uh, also, I want to let uh, the community know that on December 13th, I will be presenting my Game of Thrones talk, the keynote that I did for um, B-Sides Charleston. I'll be presenting it again with some modifications based on the feedback I got from James McQuiggan and Matt Jones uh, gave me some constructive feedback. Not that it was a bad talk, but there was, you know, there's some opportunities to improve. Yeah, uh, I'll be giving that talk live through Black Hills Information Security's anti-cast. So if you want to catch my Game of Thrones talk, which I think I, I think it was an awesome talk. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, classic, you know, super passionate and throwing stuff around. December 13th on Black Hills Information Security channels. I will be sharing it on socials. You won't, don't worry. It's like if you don't get it this second, um, don't sweat it. But um, it's coming uh, December 13th. And uh, you know, they asked me if I wanted to do an anti-cast. I said, yeah. And then a lot of people said they wanted to, couldn't make the stream. Um, it's going to be, the, the my keynote will be put on YouTube, but, you know, you can watch it. But I would, I would say come to the anti-cast and watch me tell it live because I can do Q&A and stuff like that. All right. So keeping the questions coming, um, Nick Barker wants to know what cameras I'm using. Uh, this is an A6400. This is a Sony ZV-1F. I'm probably going to get another Sony a6400 because I like them and they're they're very predictable uh, for a third shot. So then we can get close on James, close on Jerry, and then, you know, d- this guy right here. Uh, the, the live video podcast is a work in progress. Just shout out to Mrs. Osier uh, who got me a Simply Cyber, communi- uh, Simply Cyber neon sign, which will be going right here once we get that up. It's just um, I didn't want to commit to putting something on the wall. She also put up these awesome blinds that you've got here in your office because you've got a, a window over there. You've got a door window there. You've got three little windows up there, which are great for bringing in natural light, but wreak havoc uh, because if the light changes outside, it changes the cameras too. But he's got these beautiful uh, uh, window darkening uh, shades that are up here. Uh, fantastic work. Yeah, she. Uh, I, I want to know if I can hire her to come down to my house because there's some. I got some fun projects for her too. Give you a reason to come down to Orlando. <laughs> yeah, my wife's amazing. Uh, hey, really, quick, we got a super chat coming in. Alan Norris with a five banger. Here we go. Come on, 
we just become best friends? Yeah. Thank you so much for the super chat, Alan. He says, since I just got the desktop fully running, I'm trying to turn it into a home lab server. Got RDP set up. Any suggestions for cyber home lab software? All right, so Alan Norris, if you're going to run the entire environment uh, local to your system, I mean, I would either A, go get a hypervisor like um, VMware and, and get your VM set up so you can have that environment and set it up nice and clean. Uh, obviously, I'm not a Kubernetes uh, Docker expert, but I do know a lot of people are using Docker um, a, as kind of home lab VMs and stuff like that with great success. I would recommend that. Um, if it were me, I would get you know a Windows client that you can uh, pull down. I would get a, a Windows server if you can with AD, so you can have like a true you know network with AD and then a client that you can push GPOs and, and tweak with. Obviously, you want a Linux box. Um, if you want to make it easy, you could get Kali um, and, and roll with that. Um, yeah, and then I mean it's it, it, like snapshot everything so you can roll back. Uh, you may want to get a, um, I think Flare VM is quite popular and Remnux is quite popular for um, a malware analysis. So if you want, it depends what kind of lab you want, Alan, right? Like what 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 kind of uh, learning objectives are you trying to to pull out? Uh, but that's my thought on that. James, what would you do with your home lab? <laughs> for my home lab, I, I know that I've got set up at home. Uh, you've, yeah, with what Jerry's talking about with Linux, go out and get Metasploitable. The Metasploit, it's basically a vulnerable system. Do not put it on the internet, but use it in your home lab environment. Have that to attack. And then there's a variety of other ones. OWASP has got one that's a, a VM that you can install that you can you know, run the scans, run the discover the vulnerabilities, launch the attacks, those kind of things. Um, and there's a variety of different ones that are out there, and you'll find them out on GitHub and also out on the different websites. But have yourself a lab environment that you can actually launch and practice and do those attacks. Um, and going through and then also, you know, make sure, you know, it can also allow you to prep to do um, network monitoring, you know, figure out how, you know, have that set up as well, do a variety of different monitoring systems, uh, whether you get a couple of Raspberry Pis and have those as well, you know, you'll you do VNC or RDP. Uh, but yeah, so definitely home labs are, are certainly a great way to go, you, whether you get one big system and load everything on there, or you have multiple actual physical systems. Um, getting yourself a firewall, isolating that from your, your home network and then uh, being able to protect it. And uh, But again, yeah, have that Metasploitable and the different exploitable systems overall and uh, give yourself a, a good environment to play in. Awesome. So while you were talking, another super chat came in from Lazaro. I want to I wanna say shout out, obviously, Lazaro, thanks for the super chat, obviously. Um, Can we just become best friends? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so Lazaro said, took my advice and basically um, sat down with somebody and mentored them and helped them set up a home lab that, uh, and then that set up the home lab uh, Lazaro published. Felt good to overcome self-doubt. Thanks again, Dr. Osher. Hey, first of all, Lazaro, congratulations. Uh, love that you're giving back the community. Second of all, um, you know, way to, uh, like, first of all, imposter syndrome is a real thing in our industry. It takes a lot to get over it. I have videos on the channel about dealing with imposter syndrome. But what you just did is definitely a way to, I guess, give yourself affirmation around your capabilities and your abilities. And dude, here's the reality too. Like say you were setting up that home lab with the person and something weird came up. Just, you, you can Google it. Like it, it, we are human, we're, in, we're fallible and it's, it's okay. In fact, it, I would almost argue that it helps the mentee realize that, holy crap, like even somebody as accomplished as Lazaro doesn't know everything right to, and let's be real like you know it doesn't matter who the mentor is it's like th this is a real lesson that a lot of people don't uh get to learn uh except they learn it or, or they don't say anything because they deal with imposter syndrome so uh congratulations and you're absolutely welcome i'm happy for you i would even encourage you lazaro to take that lab blog post and smear it all over social media and see if you can help more people with that particular lab i was gonna say you've also got a uh You've got a couple of videos on your station on setting up a home lab. You've got your Pinet hole and you've got the um, network monitoring as well. So, yeah, definitely check that out. What's that? Yeah. Juice Shop, Josh. Oh, Juice Shop. Yep, exactly. Yeah, Juice Shop is a vulnerable app and got a variety of different uh, attack profiles in there. That you, can go, you can target as well, which is really cool. Yeah. I, I also want to shout out really quickly because someone just mentioned John Hammond. John Hammond's got a video that just pubbed recently on Waza or Wazoo, however you guys like to say it. 
um, GIF and GIF, right? Um, on how to set up Waza and uh, roll it into your environment. And I watched like the first uh, maybe half of that video. And John, you know, John Hammond does excellent content anyways. But uh, if you want mod, I don't know mods, if, if, if there's somebody who can easily pull that link up and I'll pull it up on stream. But the, the, um, the Waza video with John Hammond is excellent and it's open source free. So you don't have to worry about financial obligations and stuff like that. Oh, and I guess John Hammond just dropped a chat GPT video as well. Welcome to the party, pal, John Hammond. Uh, Simply Cyber did chat GPT videos back in June. Just, just you know, whatever. We're, we're all one community. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm, I'm playing. Dude, if, if John released a chat GPT video, I'm sure it's amazing. I know chat GPT just recently released tons of features. Like, they basically unlocked all the features that you could possibly use. So, super powerful. I use ChatGPT often. Oh, yeah. Often. How, how do you use ChatGPT, James? I've got it on my phone. I've got it actually as an app on my phone, and I can got it prepped so that I can talk to it and ask it questions, which has been handy as well. Rather than, you know, going out to Google, I just go into ChatGPT. And, of course, with all generative AI, you got to be aware of the hallucinations. But, you know, trust and verify is kind of the message there. But yeah, no, ChatGPT is, is a tool that's in my arsenal of things that I use. Not afraid to use it when I need to look up information really quick. Uh, and it gives it to me back great in that, you know, language format and not just 4,803,227 pages found by Google. So yeah, definitely uh, like using ChatGPT. And I've used Claude and Bard and uh, always, you know, trying out new uh, and different generative AI tools that are out there. Uh, yeah. So, qu question coming in from chat, Brave Robert, a uh, Brave Robot, excuse me, asks: Do you believe CMMC is going to be enforced soon? Is the Cyber AB CCP worth pursuing? Okay, so for those who don't know, great question, Brave Robot. CMMC, uh, like, just ignore the acronym. Here's the deal: In the U.S. government, when they hire third-party contractors, whether it's a big-ticket dog like Lockheed Martin or Deloitte, or whether it's Coastal Information Security Group or James and Jerry Cyber Inc. Like whatever, it doesn't matter. They are giving access to sensitive resources, classified systems in some instances, um, physical access to bases and stuff like that. And for years, there's been no supply chain pushdown of security, right? So like, even though the U.S. government's wicked secure, they allow some you know, jack wagon like me to come in and, and I have access to all the things immediately. So this was an issue, uh, obviously. And eight, NIST 800-171 was released like maybe, I want to say like six or seven years ago. And the idea behind it was that these are the minimum controls. I think it's 25, 26 controls that you need to implement at your business if you're going to do business with the U.S. government. And the contracts would say, you're not allowed to win this contract unless you comply with 800-171. Cool, thumbs up. How do you comply? Well, the problem was you would self-attest, which basically means you would, you would audit yourself, which by the way, no business, zero businesses are going to audit themselves and be like, ah, oh, just missed. No, no. They're all going to pass. No, dude. Great cash, homie. No executive is going to be like, Jerry, I want you to audit us and like be not, I don't want to say be honest, but they're going to say error on the side of caution. So like control, you have multi-factor implemented your organization. We have it on our email. We have it on nothing else. Do we have multi-factor in our business? Yes. Check. Right. So when you have Boolean yes, no answers, there's a huge gray area in 8171 didn't really uh, address that. Okay. And on top of that, it, so it didn't really bring any level of security. It was like security theater, okay? CMMC has come out, and CMMC is going to require third-party independent audits. Now, again, I'm going way down the rabbit hole here for everybody, but the CMMC, w w there was corruption, okay? So, like, you had to pay to get trained. You had to pay to become an approved third-party auditor. They're turned into all sorts of conflicts of interest where, like, Lockheed Martin, just to pick a random name— Lockheed Martin has government contracts, but then they're also going to set up a third-party independent audit business to make revenue, but they're going to audit Northrop Grumman to see if they comply. They have a uh, perverse incentive to not have Northrop Grumman comply because then they can bid on that contract as Lockheed Martin and win it. On top of that, there was kickbacks. There was government—like, it, it, it turned into a really gross 
um what was that show with kevin spacey where he became president and he was like vice president house of cards it was like very house of cards right there was all sorts of like shenanigans going on and basically cmmc imploded like the government was like f this we're hold on sorry kenny that they imploded everything, so now they've rehashed it. And unfortunately, the new CMMC is basically going to be self-attestation for the lower levels. So, yes, I think that they're going to be coming. It's going to be required. But to me, it's like you just you just slapped a new skin on 171 and all the challenges 171 had. James, do you have thoughts on CMMC? I'm not sure. Okay. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, keep on rolling. Oh, Pamela, Pamela Joshua asked, what size shirts do we wear? Um, this is not, she asked it earlier. Um, so uh, Pamela, I'll, I'll DM you. <laughs> uh, what advice can you give on how to talk to companies about potential exposure for breaches? Yeah, so when you're, you know, and of course it depends, depending on what the organization, depending on how big they are. If you're talking to a board of directors, is going to be a lot different if you're just talking to somebody that's a head of IT or somebody that's an owner of a company. Uh, but essentially, when it comes down to it, a lot of it is, is the, the discussion of risk. Uh, cybersecurity, any kind of security that we do is all about reducing risk overall. And so when you're getting in front of them, it's important that you know the audience. Who are you talking with? Is it IT folks? Is it security folks? That conversation is going to be a lot different than it is if it's a CEO or COO, CFO board of directors because for them it's all about well okay well what's in it for me or so what you know what kind of impact is this going to have on my organization okay organizations are getting hit all the time with ransomware so what so if i get if i prepare for an, a ransomware attack then then i'm okay you know then you know we'll make sure we've got backups and if we get hit we get hit there's a risk appetite that a lot of them take on that they may not have and so it's important that when having that conversation that you're having it in the language that they understand because you're trying to convince them. Uh, but also at the same time, you know, a lot of these times, these organizations, they're like, okay, well, we don't want to spend $50,000 or a hundred thousand dollars right now, but okay. If we, if we get hit, then, okay, then we'll deal with it and we'll cross that bridge. And oh, then it ends up being a million dollars. And if they had taken that $50,000 and spent it earlier, but for them, they're, they're, for that, for me, a lot of the time I'm thinking, oh, we got hit. We're just like any, you know, oh, what was us? We got hit with ransomware. We take security very seriously. We have, we meet the compliance requirements, and they probably do. <laughs> but you know, checkbox security. You know, we did our security awareness training. We've got our firewalls. We've got our access controls. But you still have somebody that clicks on the link or saves their credentials in a browser, and they get, they get hit that way. You know, then you've got, uh, you've got cyber criminals coming in. So a lot of the time. You know, organizations don't want to deal with it at that time. They take on that bigger risk appetite overall. And uh, but a lot of the time is like, look, you're going to end up spending, you know, on average, your ransomware attack is several millions of dollars, you know, depending on the size. If you're a small business and you get hit with a ransomware attack and you can't produce or provide service for three days, my economics professor said you're out of business. And so, you know, is that a risk you're willing to take? And if you're not willing to take it, then, okay, what can you take and have, you know, different doors that they can choose from, you know, okay, here's the, here's the best one, you know, and it's going to cost $150,000. Here's one that's going to be 75 and here's one that's 50. They'll probably go with the $50,000 one because they don't want to spend a lot of money, but straight depending cash, on homie. straight cash, homie, but depending on how secure they want to, uh, make their organization, how much they want to reduce that risk for their organization will depend on what, what they're going to have overall. But yeah, it, it, a lot of it comes down to who your audience is, who you're talking to, what the size of the organization is, is overall, but then being able to, you know, adapt how your conversation is going to go for that. Dad joke. Dad joke. What? Ooh, we got a dad joke where, um, got to take glasses off here. Uh, what do you call a turtle that surfs the dark web? Oh, I told this one on Saturday. <laughs> That I actually, that one I actually got from ChatGPT, so we, it must have stole it from it. But what do you call a turtle that surfs the dark web? A tortoise. There you go. But I'm turning. Ha ha. <laughs> Manual sound effects here today for the right, dad jokes. In. Yep. Uh, They got multiple labs, but how do they keep their experience from what? Oh, good. So you've got multiple labs set up. This you've been. Dylan's own dad joke. 
you've been, all right, Dylan, good to hear. You've got multiple labs. That's great. You've got it documented. That's fantastic. That's kind of, you know, you're, um, you know, unless, you know, you can look at it from a variety of different ways. You've got it documented which is good because that's what you want to have up there that's what's going to help you be that unique aspect um try and attack your labs you know what you know i'm trying to think of things outside the box that you could do you know can your can you gain access into your labs are you protecting that environment as well and show how you're defending your lab environment as well as what you've set up you know what considerations have you done for securing your own home network because if you think about it your home network is like a small business you know, what have you done to be able to make sure you're protecting your home network? Do you have all your IoT devices sitting on a separate VLAN? Is your home system sitting behind a firewall that's, you know, isolated from the rest of your, you know, your, your family systems, your parents, your kids, your wives, your spouses, whatever. Uh, you know, because I know for me, that's what I've got set up at my home. I don't have it as well documented probably as you do. But certainly, you know, all my IoT devices sit on one network. Uh, my my test environment, my lab environment sits on another network. My work PC and my personal PC sit on another network and then everybody else is sitting, you know, with all their iPhones, iPad computers, they all sit on another network on their own. Uh, just so that way I've got isolation and protection overall and have that documented as well. Uh, look at different ways that you could, you know, how could that be attacked? Um, you know, and, and go from there. But if you've got it well documented, then that, you know, you've got your video diagrams, you've got your written documentation. Uh, that's going to go a long way because the important one of the first rules in cybersecurity is know your assets, your hardware assets, your software assets, you know, create yourself an SBOM list that you might have a software bill of materials. You know, if you were going to sell your home lab, you know, start putting that together and, and having that documentation that can go a long way as well, because then you start understanding the different ways that you can itemize and uh, list all your different hardware and software that you're going to have, because that's what you need to be doing when you're working in, in a cybersecurity team is got to know what you've got because you can't protect what you don't know you've got we've seen many times over the years different attacks because of that uh james i wanted to ask you what's a computer's favorite beat what's a computer's favorite beat yes what's a computer's favorite beat as in music beat i don't know rap no an algorithm, an algorithm. <laughs> algorithm. thank you billy dp for that i'm, uh, stealing, I'm stealing that one i am stealing okay algorithm. Uh, James is going to rip that one off. Uh, hey, really quick, I see Frank P in chat. Frank, I saw you um, uh, asking about the hardware uh, lab. So check it out. There were four scheduled workshops during the um, Simply CyberCon. Uh, unfortunately, just because of logistics and timing and, and, and some other issues, uh, nothing bad. Um, we had to scrub the, the Cody Kinsey hardware hacking lab. Now, Frank, if you were interested in doing that, Cody does host that workshop on the regular. He's actually, it, it was, unfortunately, the timing was bad because he was doing some transitioning stuff. But there's a guy named Ryan who now coordinates the workshops for Cody. If you go to retia.io, R-E-T-I-A dot I-O, I believe is the URL, you can find more about that. Cody is an amazing person. I love Cody. I love the hardware hacking workshop. Um we just couldn't uh, get it to work for Simply Cyber Con uh, because of basically the, the the logistics of purchasing the devices, getting them shipped out, mailed, getting signups and stuff like that. Um, it's our first con, so we're trying to work through some logistics stuff. But just just know that um, I want to uh, do a quick shout out really quickly uh, for Casually Joseph. Casually Joseph was at uh, B sides Charleston. And, uh, you know, I, I love the midnight. So if you don't know the midnight, I love the midnight and, uh, casually Joseph actually, um, you know, he, he's local. He's done a lot of things with the community. Uh, I love what he's doing. And he, he basically got me a gift. This is the midnight album on LP record, uh, kids, which is a phenomenal album. And again, thank you very much. Uh, casually Joseph and super pumped to have it. Look for this to be in the background. Once the studio's artwork and such gets, uh up and running yeah we'll have to make sure that the reflections are good but <laughs> but uh yeah thanks again casually joseph and thank you to all of you for all that you do um we are an amazing community and it's freaking awesome yes we are yes you are why did the notification go to school why i don't know why did to be know? more alert to be yes all right i think we're right at 9 30 james i know you got a i know oh you got a couple minutes okay uh 
Will you get a hold of Alex Lynn for a future collab? Maybe Adam, I'll have to look into it. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, if I don't know who Adam Lind is, but that doesn't mean that I can't reach out and see if they're interested in collabing. Um, I'm, you know, Q1, like I've been working my tail off as many of as you know, I'm trying to like chill in December and then I'll still do the live streams and the, the videos and I'm anti cast. Like I'm still doing a lot of work. I'm just doing less of a lot of work in December uh, with the expectation that Q1 will be, um, I'll start doing more, you know, produce videos, collaborations and such like that. We've also got an A load of um, Simply Cyber live guest long form interviews. The things I do on Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Jessica Hyde is coming this week um, for for that. I can't pull it up right now, but just believe me. We've got a whole slate. Michelle Kahn, OSINT uh, experts coming on, author of Phantom CISO. Uh, we've got Mike Prevett, uh, who's uh, responsible for the return on investment security newsletter. Um, we've got Mike Saunders from Red Siege coming on, talking about C2 frameworks and, and payloads. Uh, so many other guests are coming on. We've got a crazy slate of great guests coming in December. Again, I'm taking December off. So, <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Uh, so James, we are kind of wrapping up. So why don't, I'll give you two minutes to, uh, you know, whatever. Two minutes to whatever. No, it, this has been fantastic this morning. I really appreciate it. Jerry coming on the, the show here and, and chatting with everybody in this community. I've been following this since last, last summer, uh, of tw uh, 22 summer. Uh, I know some of you have probably been here a lot longer, uh, but this is a fantastic community. This is certainly something to check in on every day uh, and listen and gain insights. And this jaw jacking is great as well. But um, no, I, again, thanks for the opportunity. It was great to be out here in Charleston this weekend for B-Sides. Uh, looking forward to, you know, I, I'm bummed. I'm going to be on the road this afternoon for Mr. Finfrock's OSINT because OSINT like a boss. OSINT is a great skill to have, not only just uh, you know, doing maybe that as a career, but also for your own investigations as well. And certainly worth doing. Um, I'm definitely going to check out Jax. I love me some Jack Scott, uh, the NIST workshop. Looking forward to seeing that. And uh, Mike's LinkedIn repair. You know, I, I'm very active on LinkedIn. Definitely connect with me on LinkedIn. Just tell me you saw me on the Simply Cyber. Uh, very particular about who uh, I connect with, but uh, definitely interested in checking out Mike's LinkedIn repair because LinkedIn is a great way to be able to network with folks outside of once you get going with this environment and this community. But yeah, big shout out to uh, to seeing Mike on, uh, sorry, Frank and Dooley on, on, on Saturday and Christopher. And uh, it was great to see you guys here in, in Charleston. I know you're both, one of you is local and the other one came down from Atlanta. But um, yeah, no, this is, this is certainly a great environment to be a part of. And uh, again, I thank you, Jerry, for, for starting this, for doing this, making this your career, your life, work, and passion. Uh, and just uh, real excited to be a part of it. We love having you, James. Obviously, the community there's like a there's like a undercurrent of people who want to like revolt and unseat me as the a hole. Um, so I don't know if that means that they think you're the a hole. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, I also want to shout out really quickly because we talked about the workshops and the tracks and everything. Jenny Housley has developed a capture the flag CTF special for the Simply CyberCon. It's got all sorts of easter eggs and hidden gems obviously it'll be a fun stream but it's got easter eggs for uh if you're if you're new to the simply cyber community you can enjoy the ctf just as well as everybody else but if you're a long time you're going to find a lot of inside uh jokes and and uh just good good fun uh for sure so love uh jenny housley for doing that and and just shout out to kimberly mcknight who's been basically like the nerve center for simply CyberCon, uh keeping it going everybody should have been getting their emails speakers attendees um redemption codes to get into the discord expectations on day of for speaker tracks so um it's an a load of work guys we didn't think it was going to be easy uh, but we are executing and, uh, you know, just really, really, if, if, if you get a second, you should definitely thank, uh, Kimberly because she is literally, uh, just, uh, un invaluable, uh, for the success of this event. All right, guys. Uh, um, I think that's going to do it. I appreciate all of you for being here. If you had to jump off, totally understand. I'm Jerry. I'm James. Your chat. Until next time, y'all. Be well. We'll see you at 2 p.m. for the Charles Finn Frock Workshop. Until next time, stay secure.
everybody. I hope you enjoyed that content. Keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts, and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry. 